significant amount, and the answer to that is that yes, the way that ballot question has been referred to in the past is that it would be um, the project amount including, and then you had, would have a line to include all um, costs related to the issuance of and paying of bonds and debts. So a few answers there kind of to summarize it all is that the feeling would be that uh, if we wanted to move forward by the end of January with any sales tax project, we would have to have a, a reasonable defined scope of the project we'd be looking to accomplish. Uh, but if we decided between January and August that we wanted to draw that back to a lower amount, we would be able to do that. So a couple things there. Uh, and then lastly, uh, many of you may have seen in the last uh, week since last week's meeting or since a couple weeks ago meeting, uh, we created and put together a website on our city web page uh, that included a lot of the documents that you've been looking at at council work sessions and meetings on some of these plans uh, and asked for people to give some feedback to that. Um, we've received a handful of comments back. I wouldn't say that we've been overwhelmed with comments back, but we've received a handful. So I just wanted to run through. I'm not going to read any direct comments, but just uh, they're all available if any of you would like to see them. Many of them have been coming as emails to me. There have been a couple comments on the website itself and a few comments on social media. Um, but the general feeling that we've received from people in general has been um, that nobody in the community is interested in seeing a rise to their property taxes in order to accomplish these projects. I think that's pretty, been a pretty general comment people have said is that w I'd, I'd sure hate to see property taxes have to go up to pay for these. Um, so the next one then being is that would you be interested in at least having the opportunity to vote for a local sales tax for these projects? And that answer for the, for the most part has been yes. Um, if we're going to consider projects like this, the, the community feels that they should have the opportunity to vote on it. Um, another one being um, many have commented on the arena specific part of it that they wonder whether or not we're looking big enough at this arena project. Um, they're questioning whether or not the expansion of only a single sheet of ice is enough for a community of our size and whether or not we maybe should plan rather than expansion of only one, we should have plans for a fourth has been mentioned, a fifth has been mentioned. I'm just saying as a general comment uh, to that, I, I feel like three ice arenas is enough for our community. I think that we have plenty of ice time available, but it's a, it's a comment that's been shared. Um, Whatever we do must focus on a community center aspect to this rather than just an ice rink. That's a comment I've heard from a number of people in that um, they, they would like to see whatever type of expansion can be done be one that is more available to a, a, our community as a whole on a more regular or year-round basis. So whatever it would be should have some aspect to that. Again, these are comments from the public, not my words. Um, and... The last one being, I'm reading it as I say it here. Um, some have been concerned over the use of the amount of the project, um, the total dollar amount. Um, but the biggest thing, and I re referenced that earlier, the biggest thing that those people, as I've had conversations with them, still feel is that if a sales tax is the way to go with that, that they, they like the fact that the community would have a chance to vote on that in an election. So just a few comments to go along with that. And, and I think I'd leave it on this. Carly, you have anything else? Is that um, coming out of our discussion tonight and uh, the subsequent council meeting next week, if you all cho chose to do that, I, I think for the timeliness of this all is we need to have some direction back on um, exactly what the, the direction would be on a sales tax coming forward in the next few weeks here before the end of January. Um, and what scope of a project the community should have an opportunity to speak on or to vote on. And, and when I say that, I mean, in uh, are we looking at uh, just fixing our current ice arenas? And that's an option that's been discussed. That's kind of what led us down the road of the feasibility study in the first place. Um, a couple of numbers for, for everybody that are included in that feasibility report, but... Um, Pull, I went back to JLG after our last work session and, and asked the question of off of their study, this lets us pull out the line items that focus on the ice arena compressors and the parking lots because those are the two that are most visible that we know need to be worked on. Um, 
if we are just going to fix ice compressors and the parking lots, reconstruct parking lots at both arenas, the VFW and the Civic Center, that dollar amount alone is estimated at just short of $7 million. Okay, if we take, so that's, that would be one scenario. A second scenario would be if we remove the new arena from our ideas and just want to fit, focus on um, fixing all of the suggested or, or referenced deficiencies within the current arenas, the Civic Center and the VFW, and fix the refrigeration, those couple of numbers, ballpark area, that's about $12 million to do that work. So that would be fixing any of the code or the accessibility issues, widening the aisles at the Civic Center, adding the handrails, um, make, making it as accessible as we possibly could within the structure of that building. And, and the same at the VFW Arena, that would be the price. Um, so, and then of course we have the, the $24 million for the expansion idea that was looked at. So the question for I think for all of you and, and that we would need some direction on is where do we want to see specifically the arenas? And we say the arenas because that's the biggest number, but going through all of our facilities, we haven't made um, substantial improvements to our ballparks in for sure the last 30 years. Our boat ramp is over 30 years old with minimal to no improvements. Um, our greenway trails we know are going to need money over the course of the next few years. So the question kind of spins back to, is the sales tax an option to fund some of these projects? And if so, at what scope, at what magnitude do we want to try to further the community in its facilities that we have? So that's kind of what I have for now, Carl, if you have anything to add, otherwise we're open to any questions or comments. Uh, some of the comments I've heard is let's do it right and get it done with the first time. Let's make our facilities sustainable for another 30, 40 years. And so let's do it right now. Um, the other comment I, I'd like to make sure the public understands is that, you know, when you talk about taxes, everybody, you know, thinks, oh, my property tax are going up, my income tax is going up. This is truly a sales tax. So it's only on purchases that you buy within the city of East Grand Forks. And those purchases would have to be taxable. So clothing, food are not taxable. And that would be two cents on a dollar. 20 cents on $10 and $2 on $100. And so we, I just want to make sure that everybody's aware of that because I know some of that's been missed um, in the general public. And yes, the, um, the, the way we have to go about this is different than when we did the pool. We can't vote on it first. The legislature has to give us approval to vote on them. And so that's why we're doing it this direction, which is due January 31st. So I just want to remember that, remind the public that. Anything else? Nope, thank you. Anybody have any questions or comments at this time? Bill. Thank you. Um, how did we end up with the engineering firm that we have? And why did we go with them? I mean, there's several of them out there. Do we not, I don't know if it can be done, but is there any kind of a, a bid type of thing you can put out the engineering firms for things like this? Or is it just... Mm -hmm. We did that. Did, or did we just pick this, this firm and say that's what we want? We no, we did that. In, I'd, in, I'd say March, February or March, the council uh, gave me, through our, the Park and Rec Department, approval to, on a scope of work to request a proposal for services to do this ice arena study. So we had a timeline that any engineering firms, architectural firms that wanted to bid on it were able to. We had six companies that bid on it in that time frame, and we interviewed all six that bid. They, that, the scope of work asked for them to do the, essentially the ice arena study that you all received from JLG. Um, there were prices ranging from, JLG's was the lowest at a $10,000 fee to do that. The highest was somewhere in the range of $85,000, $87,000 to do that work. And then it was anything in between that. We interviewed all six, when I say we, myself, uh, Mr. Murphy, Brian Larson, our arena manager, uh, we interviewed all six of those firms here in this room. We had them come in and give, give us their qualifications, explain to us what they would do within their scope of work and why their fees were what their fees were for that study specifically. And through that, we decided to hire JLG, one, for the lowest price, and two, that we felt like in the interview process, they were um, the company that we felt was most qualified 
to to conduct the study for us that we felt most comfortable with in our interview process. So they were hired specifically only to do this ice arena study at that fee of ten thousand dollars. They have not been hired other than to do that fee to this point. They have not been hired to conduct any other work for us. That's at, at previous meetings. It's been discussed that what's the next step to this. We discussed we potentially would like to see some pre-design, some conceptual design that maybe could help the community understand better what we're looking at. And that's what's proposed in the next step of this here today. So the council has it would have the opportunity still, even if a project would come down the road even further, the JLG's not hired to do that work. They certainly hope they'd have an opportunity at it. Um, but it, it would be the council's at the council's discretion to hire anybody they chose to do that. Okay, so if they if for this sixty thousand dollars, I understand that mm -hmm. they don't go through with it, they don't charge it. But what all is that going to include in there to do? What are they going to do? Just a whole concept thing. design type yeah, stuff? Yeah, it's well everything that's listed in that proposal. It's laid out month by month from starting now all the way through next November. If we were going to vote on something next November, but to summarize it, it's uh, it's creating some pre-designed schematics. So that it wouldn't be a full design of a building, but it would be a schematic so that uh, we could have a community input meeting and somebody from the public could come in and look at it and see, well, what are you thinking of doing? Well, this is a, an idea of what a facility of this size for this dollar amount could look like. It'd be a, a, an artistic concept, essentially. That would be part of it. Um, they would study it, look at our community and look at other communities around us and their tax bases to give us an example of this is what the sales tax is in Grand Forks and how much revenue they make off of it. This is what the sales tax is in Crookston and how much they make off of it. This is what the sales tax is in Bemidji and how much they make off of it to give our community members an example of when we go to other communities what we're paying in sales tax versus what we're paying at home. So that people would have, if they came to a vote, people would have an informed decision to be able to make on uh, just how much is going to come out of our pockets here locally versus how much is going to come out of the pockets of visitors to our community under this this type of, of uh, sales tax. That's something that they would look at. They would help facilitate these community meetings if we ask the public to come out and ask questions and give feedback. Their professional staff would be here. Uh, they have staff in the Grand Forks office that specializes in that community involvement aspect of it. They would be here to help facilitate and to answer questions and to take feedback and help compile all of that. So when it came time for a vote next November, our residents were as informed as they could be to do it. And certainly that's, again, something that uh, there's like other engineering firms, architectural firms offer those same services. But that's, that's what's proposed from JLG in this proposal. So the sales tax right now... I don't know exactly what it is, but somewhere around eight and a half percent, something like that, East Grand Forks. Is that 8. right? Eight point one two five. Because there's eight point one two five. Because there's a point two five. So if we, put the a, if we do the sales tax thing, then we're going to be up to that ten percent, maybe a little Nine. over ten percent. Nine point one two five. Because the one percent for the pool will go away, and then we would put a two percent. So it'd be one more than it is now. We haven't decided on a one or a two. No, no, right, right. Yeah. We have but if we did the two, sorry, the pool will be paid off hopefully in June. Okay, so how much is at that percent? What what kind of money is that bringing in <clears throat> East Grand Forks again? If, if right now went? we're bringing in at one percent, about eighty-five thousand a month. It varies from month to month depending on a the month. Year. Yes. <clears throat> and the difference would be if we do the one percent, it'd probably take us fifty years to pay it back for between 45 and 50, where if we did the 2%, it would take about 25 years to pay for if we did all of those projects and finance them. The problem I have is that we're never going to be able to compete with the people across the river. It just we can't do it. We've got 8,500 people in East Grand Forks, give or take, and we're not growing. We haven't grown for 20 years. I mean, to, to speak of maybe 100 people or something, maybe, but not a lot. So the, the problem I have is once, if, if a guy was to do this project, how are we going to maintain it? How are we going to take care of it? I mean, yeah, we can spend lots of money and build things, but we still got to take care of it down the road. Look at Thief River. They were tickled pink to get their Ralph Arena up there. After they got it, now they're upset. Now they don't know what to do with it because they can't, they can't maintain it. They can't keep it up. They can't do it. They're, they're losing money on it all the time. I understand arenas aren't maybe made to make money, but um, 
we can't keep taxing our people to death in East Grand Forks. And that's what we seem to do. Every time we want something, we just raise taxes. We gotta figure out different ways. Better. Thank you. I agree with you, Mr. Helms, that we can't compete with Grand Forks. But what we can do is recognize our strengths, and our strengths are that we are a bedroom community. And as a bedroom community, we need amenities for families to participate in. And that's where the rinks come in. But well, we have them right now. We have rinks right now. But we have to bring them up to speed, you're going to have to spend 7 to $14 million. So why not spend another $10 million and get a, a new rink and have better amenities for our citizens? And the sales tax is just one option for funding this whole thing. We're looking at other options also, naming rights or donations or what have you, to, to help fund this. So. The $14 million you're talking about, that's to put in new... new uh, New compressors, Plants, compressors new, and parking new lots. New parking lot, new heating systems, air, air exchangers, handicapped accessible. Yep. So how, like how did that stuff get so high there now, if I may ask? Because on the original deal, you know, a, comp a new compressor and a new, and a new building and everything was like $3 million. The parking lot was $1.2 million or something that I've seen. The parking lot's at rank. least $2 million now. It was $2 million when we checked on it a couple of years ago. And that was just for the Civic Center parking lot, not for the VFW, which also needs some work. Yeah. The, that's where I said that it's $7 million. If you're only going to replace ice compressors and parking lots at both buildings as they stand today, the estimated cost of that is just under $7 million. That's reconstructing parking lots, and they're at a point. That's at both arenas. That's at both arenas. It's, and it's needed at both arenas. So to Clarence's point, the extra money that on top of that seven that brings it to 12 or 14, just to get arenas up to speed is replacing the failing heat exchangers, replacing uh, the, the uh, electronical components that are original with the building, getting all of the buildings up to code as far as accessibility and fire rating is concerned. All of that that's all addressed in the report that's where the extra five to seven million adds on top of ice plants and parking lots. And we would be required to do that, and Nancy probably can speak to that, because of the costs that we put in there, then we have to put them in because we, we got by with it when we did the girls' locker room because we didn't get to a, a certain dollar amount. Otherwise, we were very, very close where we were going to have to put a new elevator in and all those amenities. And so this would push us over that, and we would be required to do that, if we made those changes in those ranks. The, the other thing when we looked at putting the two together, uh, I know that um, we talked about efficiencies by doing that. Um, and the other thing was is that the VFW would be a, a multi-purpose for lots of citizens. It wouldn't just be the hockey people, you know, maybe it'll be the pickleball people or wrestling or basketball. So, you know, there's many uses that we could use that other building for, and we would ha have those efficiencies by not having it a rank. Mr. Russell. So I missed the last work session, and uh, I was gone last week. But so, and I was one of the proponents of or the big push to make sure that we brought all of this to the council for everybody to look at. We keep kicking the can down the road about trying to fix the boat ramp. And it, it, the can's been kicked many times down the road. We keep arguing about what is, what is the so-called definition of maintenance on our trails. We're, what are we collecting, a dollar a month or something from citizens and we're not collecting enough. So now we're having to collect over a period of time to fix a mile length of it. Um, we got two rinks that if you, and I'm going to pull a Henry Tweeton, if you have not been in those rinks, you need to walk into those rinks and you need to look at what they look like and you need to go in there after some of our teams have been in there and, and go through and say, what, what was in here? Because we don't have any air movement in those places. There is no air movement. And when you have 30 players with stuff laying there, it doesn't smell very good, trust me. We just keep, we keep saying, okay, we can't do this, we can't do this. 
why can't we let the people of East Grand Forks put it up for a vote? If they say yes, then we do it. If they say no, then we don't. It's, we can all say, well, I think and I think and I think it. We can analyze this number and analyze that number. We can analyze everything to death, but the bottom line is it comes from the people. We're here to represent them, yes. But they're going to have to have the final say. And we can analyze it all we want and talk about it, but our baseball program needs to get playing baseball before June 1st. And they don't need to have people out there snow blowing the fields off. If we have a way to do it, then that's another facility that we can fix. That thing hasn't looked any different other than the new facility or the, the what we call the Babe Ruth field that's been there since I've been nine years old. So we took the park shelter from somewhere and we hauled it over and we put it over at, at Stells Park. That thing is probably older than I am and it's barely hanging on. And now we're trying to draw people into our facilities. Here's our chance to go one step farther to make our community even better than it already is. And yes, it's gonna cost some money, but let the people, other than the seven of us in here, decide how that's gonna go. So there's my piece. So. Mr. Nemers. Thank you, Mr. President. I. I'd agree with Chad. I think, I mean, I've said this about the pool and I'll say it about this. If you're going to go to the people and you're going to do a project like this, make a statement out of it. Make it a statement piece. Make it something that people are, are drawn to, both within your community, but it makes a statement about what we are and what we're about here. Um, make it something that we can be proud of. Make it something that people come here and say, yeah, East Grand Forks is, is doing it right. Um, I think, like Chad said, we should be looking at all these other things that um, that are maybe not related directly related to the arenas, but are other parts of our community that people have been looking at for years and years. I think, to Chad's point, I think you know when we see this chamber study come out, I think one of the things they're going to say is, what is what's going to be the economic driver? that's going to push us going forward. It's not going to be retail. It's not going to be, it's going to be those things that draw people to the city. You know, those events, those, those type of environmental type things, the outdoors, those type of things that we can capitalize on, you know, are going to be what drive our economy going forward. Um, and this is, this is going to be, or this could be um, a, a cornerstone of that, of that type of a plan. Um, you know, going forward, I think, you know, JLG is a is a top notch architectural firm that has basically put um, put its own money where its mouth is. I mean, they've <laughs> their prices and and saying that they're basically saying that they're going to put they're doing it free of charge if we don't pass a levy is is pretty un, it's pretty amazing. I think I I'm in fully in favor of going ahead with this proposal um, to put together that type of a plan because um, like I said once you you start visualizing and I think people will get more behind these type of things um, other than just kind of every and the other thing is it kind of starts to condense what people what we've been saying all, all you know all it's been so far is just words and talking all of a sudden people start putting their own <coughs> images on things and like you said it goes from four arenas to five to six. Now we're going to have this multiplex of 15 outdoor heated arenas. You know, I mean, it's everybody can map that on. Once you start setting these things in, you know, in concrete, then they, it, it draws, it's a gravitational point, and people start, you know, they don't get so far out. They, you know, you still have new ideas and stuff like that, but you, you actually have something you can focus on. And I think, like Chad said, this is something we need to better focus on because we've been just all over the place. Um, so those are my first two. The last thing is talking about revenues and we've, you know, I said before, you know, it's got to have multifaceted approach, you know, with donations and naming and and um, you know, sales tax obviously being part of it. But wondering what other, you know, avenues we can look at. I mean, if, is there state bonding type things that are available out there? I don't know. Um, is there 
lodging tax? Like, could we, is there a way that you could take a look at what the, what the state, you know, what our sales tax revenue would be? Say it's maybe you knock that down to one and a half percent and you put a half percent lodging tax on. What does that do to the numbers? Or, you know, I don't know. Because I, I could see some direct benefit to if we're saying we're going to bring tournaments in and stuff like that. I think our hotels and, and those type of things are going to be greatly benefited. If I'm correct, Mr. Demers, lodging tax is that we don't see that anyway. Majority of that. Oh, Megan, has, uh, we just yeah. checked that number the other day. We get a very small right. percentage. Most of it goes to the CV. Right. CV the business. Yes. So I looked into it a couple months ago on where it went, and uh, so it wasn't minimal. Okay. So. Yeah. And it has option. to be initiated. And it can And it's statute where it can't raise it and have it come back it right. doesn't work that way so okay well thank you um but like i said looking at those multi you know faceted approaches but if it comes down to it i think the sales tax is the best approach um whatever it be i don't think um i don't think two percent is the desired but if that's what it comes down to i think that's it's not out of line i think um i think people would vote for it yeah. My I said to myself a hundred times as I listened to you guys last two weeks ago, like, why can't we go ask for something in the bonding bill? I mean, Minnesota's got a projected revenue, a good size chunk of a projected revenue right now. And yeah, I know that a lot of their money is put towards public projects and more of wastewater, all of those things. But I think that we need to try to go bend someone's ear about, you know, you've given money to certain cities that have benefited from building facilities like another rink or Rochester or, you know, those are some cities that have benefited from getting another rink built to be able to use. So, I, you know, if, if we go down and we ask for a certain amount and they give us half, we're way ahead. Or they say no, then we just have to tell them, then here we're coming back for, and this is why we've applied for this. It doesn't hurt to ask. Before we brought this to the com <clears throat> council, our park board commission, there's several members here. We uh, threw all these ideas around and we never once did we bring up the word property tax just to make sure that the public's quite aware of that we never once even use that word and uh, I think that we can do a lot for our funding source when we get to that point if we get to that point through donations and not a vast majority we're not going to hit anywhere near what we hit at the icon but I think we can come up with a pretty good figure to help offset some of this balance. I can't see going any other way than trying to be all inclusive here. We're trying to figure age one to 99, something for everybody in this whole program. And I think we've been able to do that, so. Mr. Goldstead. I just want to point out uh, to, to Mr. Grassel's uh, uh, question that uh, Mr. Murphy did in fact look into potentially the bonding bill. And if in fact we went for and had a 1% or 2% or a sales tax, uh, we're not able to get into the bonding bill this, uh, this time for it, but we could, even if we passed it for a, for a sales tax, at that time ask for supplementation through a bonding bill uh, after the fact and then have it paid or partially paid for it that way. That's not out of the question if we go the sales tax route. So you could, you know, in the next year you get the, you get uh, the plans, you put them, you get them to the state legislature, assuming that they approve it. You have six to eight months to be able to get public input. If it passes, uh, uh, by the by a public vote then after that even after that we can go back and and potentially bond and also supplement with with uh, donations naming rights and those types of things so there's a uh, there's a good opportunity to to be able to reduce that sales tax amount 
Um, but I, I think everybody's on the same page that we don't have seven to fourteen million dollars in cash. We're not, you know, the, the only place that we're going to be able to do that is property taxes, and nobody wants to raise the levy on the property taxes to do any of these things. So realistically, you're narrowing the scope. You're going to have to, if you're even considering this, look at potentially the sales tax route and then supplement it with other things. Uh, otherwise, it just isn't going to be able to be feasible with with uh, what we have going. So I know Mr. Murphy wasn't here to be able to address that, and uh, he uh, mentioned it yesterday at the staff meeting while I was there. Megan? Uh, just a reminder that when it does come to the bonding bill, you typically have to have items in May the year before. So um, we get reminders about getting stuff on the bonding bill, and I think they actually did extend it this year to possibly September. Uh, but you have to have that stuff in early the year before you are actually trying to get on the bonding bill. So. Thank you, ma'am. A couple of things for me, go ahead. and Mayor, I'll go to you. Um, first, thank you, both you and Reed, for going through all this and putting this together. It's, I mean, a lot of stuff in the last couple of weeks, and thank you uh, for JLG for working with us on this. A um, couple of the questions that I do have on here, uh, I know that we talked about stakeholder meetings and uh, other meetings after, you know, the, in the <coughs> time frame and looking at the calendar here. If we have to have everything ballot question in by end of July and you're going to have meetings afterwards, what are we looking at? Because <coughs> to be on the ballot, it has to be what, in July 31st, has to be to the state so they can get it on that. What do we anticipate? Or, we know we have to have the numbers by then. Yeah. So we're shorting <coughs> the window up and what we thought, well, November we're going to vote. Well, really it's not. It's end of July. So, I mean, maybe you need to look at this and make sure that we're getting to that enough meetings and <coughs> enough work being done so that by the time we're putting the numbers together in the middle of July to have it for the ballot question that we're there. Absolutely. So, I mean, I mean just keep that in mind because I know that after July we're not going to be able to change it. Can I answer that before you go further sure. with it? Um, I did ask that same question of them, and they felt it was, it, this can all certainly be adjusted to our liking if we ask for anything to be adjusted, but JLG suggested that it is important to still have some community meetings after the ballot questions are submitted. Oh, um, because it, it's, there's a, they, they rattled off some statistics, but basically made, made it feel like that the most important community input meeting you have is in that two to four weeks before the election. Uh, so that the, you know the plans are kind of set and we've decided what's on the ballot and that's where you really start to that's when people really start to come out and ask questions and wonder what they're voting on and why they're voting on it so to be able to still have some schedule in that time they felt to be important no, I agree with that um, right. but certainly there there could be some moved up to an earlier time as well you know and I'll echo the comments that have made been made today uh, I, I agree with with Mr. Grassel and Mr. Demers and Mr. Vetter uh, and the comments about, you know, the community, what the community needs and what the community, you know, is maybe going to look at down the future <laughs> what we should do. Um, I think that, you know, Chad said it right, you know, let's let the citizens vote on this and, and make sure we do it right, you know, and not kick the can down the road anymore because, you know, every time we work on something and we hear it, we hear about the next few days on the radio. Well, they kicked the can down the road again, you know. So, but um, I think just I'm okay with moving forward on it, as long as we everybody knows that everybody's going to have a say in it. You're going to have the meetings. We're going to have the ballot on November election, hopefully, get everything done, and go from there. So, Mayor. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, talked to a lot of folks about this I think probably we all have and the, the point that keeps being brought to me is you know there's a big difference between wants and needs big difference between wants and needs and folks from a tax standpoint are very happy to pay for our needs a little more reluctant to pay for our wants and I, I do think each of us should maintain that distinction in our minds what do we need and what do we want and again when you come down to what you need and, and sometimes what you need is pretty nice 
Sometimes what you need is, is a really nice facility to properly host these events and, and really do it right. We have a strong program of all the skating sports, all of them. And uh, to really have that be strong and grow, um, we need nice facilities. And we need them to be accessible to all people, we know that. And we're working toward that and have been for quite a while. Um, I'll be honest, this process, especially when you talk about maybe a January deadline to get some stuff into the state, feels quick. But what we're also saying is that's just a weird aberration in the new law coming out of the state. Whereas we used to get approval from our people first and take it to the state. Now on the front end of it all, before we even know the preferences of our people, we have to file with the state to get this process going. So I hope everybody listening understands <coughs> We're, we don't like that either. It feels backwards to all of us to some way initiate a legislative effort before we've heard from our people and, and, and actually heard from them in the, in the ballot box. But it's, it's the reality that we have. Um, another thing I want to make clear, and, and I know you all get this, we're not delegating this process. Please everyone take a look at the proposal given to us by JLG. We are not delegating this process to JLG to take it to conclusion now. Just bring this to the end, wrap it up with a string. No, because we're accountable to our people. JLG doesn't have that same accountability we do. We have a responsibility to listen to them and to do the thing according to their preferences. And so please know JLG is a contractor being brought in to help facilitate the process. We're running the process with their help. Um, and then the other thing this is not this is not an elaborate scheme to manipulate public opinion to get 51% to vote yes to something that we really want. It's not that. This is a process of making a project that a vast majority of people feel good about, that they want. So that's why we have all these community input meetings scheduled as part of the scope of work from JLG, is to actually even prioritize and revise and, and identify the highest priorities of our residents that will still accomplish the excellence that we're after in these programs. And, um, and so I hope people understand that this, again, because it's weird, we go to the legislature first and have to put out a dollar amount, and then we go to our people and say, what do you all think? How could we revise this? How could we stage this? How could we do some additional fundraising to make it all come together to a complete package? But it's the, it's the, the scenario that we've been given and I think we're going to go on to, to a next step. Please know, um, to your point, Mr. Grassel, about, you know, the people don't want us to just rehash this and kick the can. I fully agree with that. Um, but what they do want us to do is internally to bring it to a reasonable starting point so that we can start the process. And I do thank JLG for what they've done so far. Um, they've really laid out a nice scope of work. And that's our, our, now our responsibility is to take that to that next step and begin the process again of prioritizing, sequencing, and, and making it all come together. So please, anyone out there listening, please know, um, even though it's weird to have to go to that front stage to the state, this becomes a, a, an effort of listening to our people and really a dialogue back and forth. To, to bring the best project that we can to them in the fall to vote if that's where we end up. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anybody else have any comments at this time? Mr. Johnson. So our best plan is uh, the $24 million. That's going to take care of all of our other parking lot issues and this and that and within the uh, handicap stuff and read. The that didn't get to our trails. That didn't get to our. That doesn't. Ground. Yeah, that that yeah. covers the ice arena study the JLG looked at. It doesn't look at the ballpark. It doesn't look at the trails, the boat ramp, any of that. No, so. I'm just talking about the arena parking lots and, and yeah. the arena, the, the arena situation. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have anything? See none. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, number two has been pulled, so we'll move on to number three, review of water tower design. Mr. Demers. Oh boy, I wasn't ready. Just so everybody knows that we have to be done yep. before six. We'll go fast. Uh, <laughs> as has been discussed before, uh, Water and Light is in the process of repainting the north end water tower. Um, and in that process has considered what 
if anything to change with the logo design etc on that um, we requested some mock-ups from Steve <laughs> uh, he, they went out and kind of put some stuff on put some ideas up on the board um, so there are some um, ideas at the water and light Commission level um, people like the idea of using our logo um, or our new um, logo de marketing design um, they, there was also a request to kind of look at look putting an <coughs> American flag on the on the on the side uh, it was kind of decided that they like the the stationary flag rather than the waving flag um, but just wanted to come back to the council um, to get any feedback input there's also a proposal um, from Northland um, to do their logo on one of the sides the north side, the north side I would I would put it on the south side I guess as you're coming in it's East Grand Forks and as you're going out it would be Northland but that's my <laughs> proposal um, but their proposal was like I think 10 to 20 or 15 to 20,000 and uh, the administrator, the Keith's idea was that it would be at least twenty thousand to do to put that on. That's what he would charge to put that on, just to for sure cover. I mean, the cost of doing it plus you would make some money on it, I guess. But like I said, that's just putting it in this board's um, ballywick. Would if there's any preferences or. Everything you said, I like 5A. That was the straight flag with Northland in our logo. That's the one I favored as I looked through it. Not the wavy flag, the straight flag with the two logos. That's cool. And the only other question I had about if we go out to Northland, and I did, I started thinking about it as we started talking about naming rights for arenas and those type of things. Would that have to, can we just do that on a request basis, or does that have to be something that we would have to go out and put out for, you know. Well, I don't think is it put out for, for bids. So w I, I guess if it's you didn't want to. So if someone else came to us in between now and then, what do we do? You know, do we? Is it just at our discretion or? Yes, it's at your discretion. Essentially, they <clears throat> approached you and asked you if you would do it. Um, it hasn't been decided at this point in time. Uh, and it's a, it's a community thing as long as it's being paid for. Like I've always said is that if you're going to do that type of thing, you are opening yourself up for other uh, requests. But it would have to end up being a reasonable request. <coughs> we wouldn't have to put it next to the logo on, on the water tower. You know, this is kind of a, uh, a finite uh, thing because it's going to be up there for... 30 years before you do anything about it. So you wouldn't have to start stenciling the entire water tower to do it. And you don't have to do Northland either. You know, that was just a request. Right, and that's, it was just a request. And like I said, I've, mm -hmm. I, it wasn't like my top choice to do that. I, I think it's our water tower. We should brand it for East Grand Forks. But if there's any other input... I wouldn't have a problem with Northland was on there myself, so I like the five A also. Is this actually something the council water and light takes care of? This water and light will take care of it, but yeah. we're defer or we're right trying just, to <laughs> just to get ideas. Be inclusive and okay. Steve, Steve, do you have them? Oh, I was going to say basically a week ago we presented these options to the Water and Light Commission. Keith told them that we're hoping by the December 18th commission meeting um, for them to kind of decide which way they want to go because we're actually filing the plans and specs for the rehabilitation of the tower. Um, we're filing that on the 18th and that project will bid um, I think around the 15th of January is what we're anticipating. So, you know, to get to get a bid, we just need to know what, what direction we want to go with the logo. So, yeah. When, if you put the flag on, how does that hold the integrity of that flag? You know, the colors. I mean, how many times are we going to have to, I mean, are we going back up to 
you know, if it's painted for, I don't know, when's the last time we painted that thing? I think that it's 20, 20 year years. lifespan is yeah. what they kind of, what keeps I mean, so what is that going to do over a period of time? You know, is it, are we able to seal think, that off? I mean, it, yeah, I, I mean, just I don't those, like to see that. Yeah, I think those coatings are, you know, I, I don't think they're good enough coatings that they're not going to, I don't think, fade and, and everything like that. I think they're going to hold that color, so. And I'm going to play devil's advocate because I voted for Northland to use the parking lot every time they used it for <laughs> trading. <laughs> and they always tell us they can't, they couldn't find any money. <laughs> well, all of a sudden they want their logo on our water tower and they're able to come up with 15,000. 20. Or 20. <laughs> I'm just playing the... 20 something. That's over like 20 years though. That's a like grand a year. No, it's up front. Up front. Oh, is it up front? Yeah. Up front. I, I, I wasn't in their standing was every year. How often do they paint the water tower? How many years are they usually? You know, 20 years. Probably 15, it 20 is. years, yeah. 20, yeah. <coughs> Anybody else have anything on the water tower? Sorry. No, you're no. good. It's got to be said. Thank you, Mark. I uh, just think that I think that uh, somebody should give some input to the water and light regarding whether or not you uh, want Northland, you don't want Northland, uh, you know, some something to come forward from them because that's what they're actually looking for. That's the biggest they want some direction because they want to work with the city because it is the city's water tower and it's going to represent the city. I'm in favor of North Lawn. I'm fine with it. You fine with it, I'm Tim? I'm fine with it. You one, fine with one it? One side, right? Right. Yeah. So what I kind of heard is 5A was kind of maybe what... Right. And I think we is. we should, I don't know, we'll talk about switching the north and the south just because... Yep, y'all yeah. can figure that out. Yeah. yeah. We don't need to be in that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Alrighty, update the city park designation, Mr. Galstead. Essentially, this is a resolution. We have a resolution in place that was, uh, it's been in place for a considerable amount of time at the bequest or request of the, the county to be able to help them prosecute uh, drug-related offenses. Uh, currently, the parks that we have designated are not accurate. We've added some, we've subtracted some, and they came to us again and just asked for us to, res to uh, uh, revise the designated parks in the city of East Grand Forks. We went through them, Reed, myself, uh, and uh, Steve Emery, uh, they d developed a map, uh, and this is just a uh, resolution to update the designated parks in the city of East Grand Forks. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Galstead? Mr. Demers. Thank you. I just, I, is there any delineation, and I, it, this isn't maybe directly related to this, but where Griggs Park and Lefebvre Park are, because where you, the Griggs Park trailhead is not where <coughs> Griggs Park was always at. Griggs Park is actually south of 2nd in its old configuration. You know, it's not up north there. So, is there, Griggs and like Park I said, it doesn't matter for this. Is Griggs much. Park where the baseball field? It's probably where that second practice field, field is, sits, like right? that little right. corner little yeah. thing. That's about where it was. So, I mean, I would, I think everything north of and east of there should be Griggs Park and Lefebvre should be the stuff that's maybe along the riverbank or something. But that's maybe for the Park and Rec Board to look at or... Whatever. The other thing I was wondering is, what what's the when you list something as a park, city park zone? What's the offset for that? For what meaning? When it goes into you know into the enforcement, what constitutes? Is it like a thousand feet from that? Or is it uh, <coughs> one one city block or three hundred feet? Three hundred. How much when you account for city parks, schools, all this you know all the different zones <laughs> how much of the city does that cover when i have you no start idea. doing the buffers and stuff like that is it I, I have no idea uh this is not something that i deal with this is for felonies which is controlling drug uh basically drug sales and protecting the children uh you know essentially in in the park zones this also is not a uh, school district uh because the school uh, schools and such also are included in this 15201, right. um, and that's something entirely separate. 
Okay. So, which is in our long range trend, or not our long range, our land use plan. Yeah. So I, I can look it up for you at, at that point in time. But yeah, we, we do acreages and percentages in our land use plan. So. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Demers? Anything else from Mr. Galstead? Uh, nothing from me. Wonderful. Unless you have any questions. There, number five, review of Metropolitan Plan and Organization Rental Agreements. Ms. Ellis. I'll just stand because it'll be quick. Uh, the MPO is renewing their lease. They're dropping the office between admin and uh, the mayor's office um, because of uh, they've they've downsized an employee, so they don't need that office. They do need some storage space, so I've agreed to find them some space. We have found the space, but I'd like to charge them twenty five dollars a month for that space. So, <coughs> just asking if you'll approve the lease agreement once it goes through their board, exec board, and we negotiate that. Uh, price per square foot. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Ellis on that? I see none, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Entertain motion to adjourn. <coughs> Move. Second. Move by Move. Reappel. <coughs> Second by Demers. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. It means adjourn. We'll move upstairs.